Sherry. Welcome to the show. I'm Sherry Schreiner. A couple things I want to talk about tonight. You know, I've been paying attention to this uh, alien agenda crowd that's finally coming into forefront after 15 years of following these people. And so I want to talk about a little bit tonight about what's going on with that, you know. Um, First, I want to talk about the debates because they've been a riot. I don't know about you, but to me, it's just comic relief. It's Comedy Central at its best. You have Donald Trump, uh, who has been wearing Democrat blues, and Hillary Clinton, who's been wearing Republican reds in the first debate. And they really seem to have Donald's tails in a knot this whole time. I know yesterday's second debate, he finally came out uh, changing his scene a little bit, trying to look a little presidential, wearing his, the typical New World Order colors, black, white, and red, and Hillary wearing the typical Masonic colors, black and white. But they've, I, what I've noticed, seems to notice other than Hillary just being the clone, Hillary is not human, folks. She's not even close to human. They keep pulling out clones of her. The real one died 2012. I was the first one to break that. Years ago, everybody takes my stuff. Uh, And so they've been using clones of her since. Of course, now they're blaming it on uh, a a brain injury. She supposedly got a plane crash in a a ram in a plane crash. Well, you know, that was probably one of her clones because the original Hillary didn't die in a plane crash. The original Hillary was killed in the bunker of the White House. And so, uh, by the powers that be, the Illuminati, and so, people that run back out of D.C. You always hear celebrities and politicians that are afraid to breathe their name, and everybody wants to know specific names, and it's, you know, specific people, uh, they're reptiles, posing as humans. So they, you know, they're, they're here dominating Earth and every government's politics, uh, they don't have, you know, nobody knows their particular names. It's really hard to come by because they operate so deep behind uh, human comprehension, you can't even grasp it. Um, but it's them. I mean, if you look at the presidents, you would think that having a group of security to make you feel safe, you would appreciate that. But how many people have hated the secret security details? Everybody's hated them. All the presidents have come out barking about them, not liking them very much. Hillary Clinton doesn't hide it a bit, how she, how much she hates Secret Service. So if it was just about security, then why would they be hated? But it's not about security. You may have the lower 80% that's hired in for security, and they, and they do Secret Service work. But there's always that top 1%. That's hidden away from public view in every single agency, every single organization, every single group. You always have that hidden top layer. And this hidden top layer of the Secret Service isn't any different. It's all lizard control. It's reptilian control. That's how they control a president. They control what they do. They're babysitters. They're enforcers. They're not friends of the president. They make sure that these people are doing what they're supposed to do. Read the script right, read the teleprompter right. Now they're at the point where they can just turn off a clone and bring in another one. (laughs) I mean, they have a bunker underneath the White House. They started building it back in 2008. And, of course, it's finally done now. But they have a a lab under there, and that's where they keep presidential clones. So in case one Obama clone goes nuts, like the Hillary clones have been doing, they can retire that one and then turn on another one. And you guys think this is fiction, but this is total reality. This is total reality, and this is stuff the Father has shown me. I don't need documents. I know people want to see secret documents and all that kind of stuff. I'm a prophet, and the Father just shows me uh, things, and so that's how I know they exist. And these places that I speak of have 
have always been confirmed by others. They've always been confirmed. That's how I know they exist. So it's not. It's it's fiction moving into reality, folks. You think it's fiction. I know it's not fiction. I've been dealing with this stuff forever. You know? I didn't wake up. I was born into this. <laughs> People are just waking up to the truth. Uh, try living through it your entire life. Just seeing and hearing things other people don't. Knowing that there's another reality within our own that operates within it and takes over, dominates, and controls it. The spiritual reality around us is very real. And it's a layered dimension. You can either see it or you don't. It's the Father who opens up people's eyes to see, their ears to hear. Some people will never understand this because they're simply not appointed to. They're not appointed to. That's why we, so many people will argue endlessly with their families, trying to wake them up. Some of them just simply will never get it because they don't have a love for the truth. They don't have a love for the box. You know, reality puts you in a box and says, this is what you should believe, this is... This is what you should know. And that's all there is. There's nothing to it. And that's what they believe. And, of course, they have hellfire hanging over their heads. So they're afraid to question anything. They think they'll go to hell. They think they're being disloyal to the Father, to their religion. Liberation is realizing that don't need religion. You need relationship. And once you realize that, it's liberating. It's liberating. Because what does the the Bible talk about at uh, the last day's church, Church of Laodicea? Is Yahushua standing outside the door. They don't, they don't need him. He ain't welcome inside the church. They got it all figured out. They got their own thing going. He ain't welcome in the churches. That's why he's standing outside of them. And they're so apostate and so full of garbage and paganisms, he doesn't want to be inside them. People think, well, I, I, I go and, and I feel the Lord's presence there. Well, when you start singing to the Father, that's spiritual warfare 101. When you start praising his name, you're going to feel his instant presence. If you're ever afraid, start singing. Start praising his name. Start quoting psalms. Start quoting scripture. Because that draws his spirit to you, no matter where you are, no matter what circumstance you're in. When you start praising and glorifying his name, it draws his presence instantly to you, and it uplifts you. And that's why so many people can go to these pagan places and say that they feel the presence of the Father. But you know what? As soon as you start singing, you stop. And and as soon as as, as the the fire-breathing demon starts speaking that runs the church, starts... All the energy leaves. You just feel the energy leave. Because most of these pastors simply are not anointed by the Father. How many people have you heard tell you growing up or even as an adult that they're called to preach? They're called to preach. Okay. So they're called to preach, but what do they do? They go straight to the box. They go straight to the box of control. And they do all the things the system tells them to do. They go to seminary school. They learn what's acceptable to be teaching in the Sunday schools and the churches. And they start up another church on Sun God Day, the first day of the week. All these churches preach to follow the Ten Commandments. They don't even keep them themselves if they're operating on Sundays. Because the seventh day is Saturday. Maybe you're one of these preachers the Lord did call into the ministry and he's waiting for you to hear him. Get out of that. Get out of that Babylon religion. And get in and get into the truth so he can lead you into what to teach his people. So this whole charade of Trump and Hillary has been entertaining. Now I did a video months ago 
about how they mind wired Donald Trump and talk about it in my book, Interview with the Devil. How they were using a new tech. That's how when you look at him, sometimes he just seems so crazy. He's not the Trump you've known all these years growing up or watching him on TV or whatever. He just seems so much crazier. Like he has that, that distance, dull look in his eyes. That's the mind wire. And uh, they're trying to control what he's saying. They didn't, they have a clone of him. They have lookalikes. But they're not using him. They're using his body drag because they're not having such good success with the clones. You can see that watching Hillary. These clones go ballistic. And when you clone a host, they all have the characteristics of the host that they're cloned from. You know, they had this technology where they could attach wires to your brain. You see the stuff on on, on sci-fi movies. They put a helmet on your head. <laughs> they put wires up against your head. They can download every memory in your brain, every memory you have as a person. They can download it and put it on a computer chip. Every memory, every thought, every experience, Everything about you, they can put on a computer chip. And then they can put that chip into another person, into a cloned body. Not a person, but a cloned body that looks like a person. And then that cloned body, with your memories, acts exactly like you. Oh, yeah, they do this stuff all the time. They were doing it for... It's the 30s. It's the 40s. You know, I, I thought, well, you know, I, I always heard since Carter, I think it was George Salant that revealed President Carter was the first cloned president. Uh, but I'm hearing it goes much earlier than that. They were cloning in the 30s. And if you look at it, when I wrote my first book, The Coming UFO Invasion, Bible Codes Revealed, was Bible Codes, I'm, I'm being dyslexic, Bible Codes Revealed, The Coming UFO Invasion. I talked about the treaty with Eisenhower and then the one with uh, uh, Truman. And so uh, if you go by their dates, by, by, by even the first treaty that, that Eisenhower signed with them in '33, and they said that they're cloning already, that's when it started. Now, the father had always told me, even, even back when I first started learning about this stuff, that... Uh, Stay away from them because there was a group. There was a, I don't know what they called themselves, COM4 or something, I don't remember. They wanted me to join this group and it was friendly, supposedly friendly aliens and human military and humans mixed together. They were a resistance group against the New World Order and they wanted me to join their group and so I asked Father about it. And he told me that stay away from these groups. Because all of these groups that had these friendly aliens are gonna be they're gonna be deceived by them and eventually taken over by these friendly aliens. Uh they play good cop, bad cop, they infiltrate good groups, instigate, lead, fund them, and then they they introduce bad ones. They play both sides. And so that's what these friendly aliens and these resistance groups were doing. But Eisenhower got caught up with that, and as soon as he signed one agreement with them, uh, they started taking over the government. That's what the father had said. Everybody who comes in contact with aliens, whether it's just an exploratory meeting, hi, how are you, who are you, whatever, they get taken over by them. So since the 30s, they started assimilating into our government, taking over it. That's why we have the NSA today, the CIA, all these different federal agencies. Wow. I was reading about one the other day, and, you know, uh, I've been screaming about child trafficking and how they traffic and imprison, rape, and kill children all over the world, and that our, our Pentagon is the number one child trafficker in the world. 
losing my train of thought here. Hmm. <laughs> you think? Uh, I can't remember where I was going with it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, this has been going on for a long time in the background. Child trafficking. Well, the military, back in the, the, the 60s, 70s, and 80s, you know, they weren't going to hear that. Because back then, the seed of complete horror and abominations were small. It was there in the military, but it wasn't dominating it. We had honorable men in positions in the military at that time still. And they actually used to go in, in groups, form groups, special forces. And they would go on uh, pedophile extraction missions where they would hunt these kids down and free them from their captors. They would hunt down underground bases like Dulcie and try to uh, free the captors, the captives inside Dulcie and other bases. It used to be a time where the human element was still trying to fight and able to fight against the oppressors of the Satanists and the reptilians that were starting to take over our society. But then what happened was they all got taken over. They got taken out and taken over, and now all of these agencies and groups that used to fight against evil have become the very evil they were fighting against. There's nothing honorable in the military now. In fact, to get to colonel level or above, you have to sign the dotted line. You know, I remember years ago there was a push in the military and all these officers were being... uh, Kicked out and replaced. They, they they shove you out. They have various different ways of forcing you out. They clearly didn't want Christians involved at the high levels. And, and there's none now. Yourselves, period. There's no Christians. There's no true Christians involved at any high level of any branch of the military. Because you can't be. And be at the high levels. To be at the high levels, you had to sign your soul. Sign, you, sign the dotted line, give your soul to Satan to show your loyalty and, and, and to him. Because that's what they're doing. They're, they're trafficking children. They're raping and murdering him. It's part of their requirements to be officers. They have to do it themselves. They're not just directing it around the world for Satanists, high-level Satanists, to do it. They have to do it themselves. And it goes down to the very airline pilots who fly them, who guard them lead them around from base to base. These children are abused at every level. And it's everybody involved with it that comes into contact because it's blackmail. It's also blackmail. If they ever want to talk, they've got proof, they've got videos that they raped and killed a child. It shuts all of them up, shuts all of them down. You know, think about it. Why is why why is why is Trump towing the line and shutting up about Obama's birth certificate? Because he was on the right path. He knows he was. They make fun of him on the media because they want to get their last jabs in, and Trump just kind of has to bite his lip and go along with it. You know, he could easily brush out the facts that it was a fake Photoshop birth certificate that they, they, they that they finally did produce of Obama. I mean, I was just reading last year how Hawaiian officials proclaiming there's not one record of Obama being born in Hawaii. Nobody knows he's a, the original was born in, in Kenya, and, and they can't even probably even prove that the, the Obama in office now is Barry Sotero. A clone. I mean, Trump could push it if he wanted to and be right. So he's he's really biting his lip on that one and, and, and taking it for some reason. Taking the hits. I don't know why they even care about pushing the birthing issue because, you know, I I just posted a, a thing on my Facebook that somebody else had 
somebody else has posted that there is a law. I think the Fed.com posts the law itself that states, according to the Constitution itself, that Hillary cannot run, cannot hold federal office. There is a law against anyone who has been involved in uh, United States Code. Whoever willfully and unlawfully conceals, removes, mutilates, obliterates, or destroys or attempts to do so uh, blah, 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 describes all of her actions with her private email server and how she deleted 30,000 emails has been investigated by the FBI, which automatically would pretty much cause her to lose any kind of security clearance. Uh, but she is, uh, anyone found to be doing of that, forfeits his office and is disqualified from holding any office under the United States. That's Hillary. She doesn't qualify to run. And this is Federal Law, Title 18, Section 2071. And it's listed at the Cornell Law Library. So by the law's very definition, Hillary does not qualify, cannot hold federal office. Slap in the face, huh? So the trade continues. We'll have another debate. It'll be fun. I just look at it as boxing matches, comedy, central entertainment. Everyone keeps uh, pushing the war hype. I don't buy it. I don't think there's going to be a war in the dump of the Middle East. Uh, they, they've they got all their paid mercenaries over there. It's just an oil war for the queen. Uh, just a bunch of hype. What does concern me is the fact that Russia went on this hype, used the hype, to evacuate 4 million people into underground bunkers. And as somebody else brought up, Russia doesn't have the FEMA camp scenario like America does. And and I know this so well. They've been building bunkers for years for all their people. In fact, every nation in the world has almost every nation, has some kind of protection planned for their citizens. Except America. America has no plans to protect their citizens. The only things they want to do is round them up and put them into FEMA camps. And so Russia's version of doing that is evacuating people into underground bunkers. What if all those people just were evacuated and moved into their deaths? What if that was their FEMA in Russia? I know it makes your heart sink. And I'm sure some of them will come back. You know, they're not going to disappear all four million, but what if they disappeared one million? Isn't that too many? Is that one person too many? And what are they doing with them? Are they feeding the aliens? Seems like a big food grab to me. Because that's what they are. They're food grabs and harvest grabs. They harvest their organs. And the aliens use them as food. So what if Russia just had a huge, what we call FEMA roundup? That'd be pretty crazy, huh? Not too far-fetched. It's coming to America. They use all of these disasters that they implement uh, to disappear people, to feed aliens. Florida was supposed to be underwater by now. It's supposed to be just completely destroyed. And you know what? The Oregon Warriors down there did a great job, did what they were led to do by the Most High, and they Oregon their areas. And the areas that had Oregon in them, the hurricanes didn't affect. They weren't destroyed by the hurricanes. They pushed the winds away from them. That's what the Oregon does. It's like a wall of energy. That, that when the high winds come, when the destructive winds come, the, the Oregon will push it away and, and, and direct the, the winds towards somewhere else. I've seen it happen over and over and over again in this country with people who've had Oregon to their areas. And tornadoes were coming towards them, or hurricanes, and their area was diverted. It was being destroyed because of the Oregon. People that are listening... 
you know, people will be praying, oh, Father, protect us, protect our area, protect our home, and then it's flooded and destroyed. He's like, you know what? I already told you what to do to protect yourselves. I sent my watchmen, I sent my prophets to tell you what to do, and you won't listen. They don't listen. Oh, no, not Oregon, that's witchcraft. <laughs> the prophet himself tells us to make Oregon his way. He gave me the directions for it. And get it out there for people to protect themselves. And then now all I want to do is hiss. I talk about how it's not a family. They don't even ask me. Yeah, that's why I have a lot of haters. But the proof's in the pudding, folks. The proof's in the pudding. People who had their areas Oregon were not affected by the hurricanes. And those who didn't the water surges and fighting with people. So there's several events that have been going on in the background that I want to bring up. This is a little bit detrimental to our, to our nation, don't you think? Um, all right. I think it was Friday. Obama makes an announcement. Somewhere. I didn't see it. I don't know if it was on TV. I think there's a YouTube blurb of it somewhere. But he he has signed the Paris Agreement. Now, our president cannot ratify an agreement. Only Congress can ratify agreements. So they always do things above and around and twist the law to serve their own ends, which makes it completely illegal but but nobody nobody those who care are shut up and told to sit down uh, because they're just kind of winging things and doing things how they want. Nobody has any power or ability to do anything about it. So his totally illegal move of announcing that America has signed on to the Paris what they call the Paris Agreement, and they want you to think that this is a bill. That's about emissions control. Carbon emissions control. That's what they say it's about. Now, there is absolutely no scientific evidence anywhere that if we reduced carbon emissions on the Earth, that it would affect uh, the greenhouse gases being produced and it would lower the temperature of the Earth because they're concerned about the temperature of the Earth heating up. When actually it's reversed, we're going into an ice age code speak. I always knew it was code speak. It's code speak for the fact that there's so much orgo that it's frying the aliens in space and they're crashing to Earth. And so they're blaming it on carbon emissions. That's the code speak for orgo. But they they can't outlaw orgo without having to admit they're being defeated by it. So they coming up with carbon emissions. Don't blame it on that. I'm not going to let anybody know it's the actual orgo. Blame it on the emissions. And so part of this agreement states that fuel-based technology will be ended within, I don't know, 20 years. So if, if you're in the oil industry, your livelihood's in the oil industry, you're going to be losing your job sooner or later because they're moving towards electric-based lithium-based battery cars. Everything's moving into technology. They power entire underground bases with copper and magnets and crystal technology. And those are the exact same thing we put in our orgo. <laughs> the exact same ingredients. You put magnets, magnify the crystals, because crystals are our energy power source. They're all over heaven. So I, I, you know, it's, it's crazy to hear Christians hiss about crystals when heaven's full of them. The Father created them. Just because evil uses them doesn't make the crystal evil. Then you're saying God's evil. They're a bunch of idiots. But it's the same ingredients. Copper. We have the copper coil. That, that 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 magnet that to tell the crystals what which way which direction to produce the energy, 
and magnets can magnify the power of that output. So I have magnetic orgo that I sell on my website. I teach people how to make it as well on their own. But that's where they're headed. And they're heading into lithium batteries are going to make, uh, for whatever for whatever worth it is. Because you know what? Not everyone's going to be around in 20 years. <laughs> so all this is kind of like a mess. So, okay, we're probably going to end this archaic fill up your car with gasoline because they've had inventions for years and they've been killing inventors for years that have come up with alternate ways to fire to power cars, power vehicles. I saw a guy in town uh running his car in water. Water. He was driving around town. Some people have come up with ethanol inventions, running them on corn. People have been coming up with inventions for years, and the government's been killing them because they didn't want to end the monopoly that they have on gas and oil. They make too much money off of that, charging insane prices, keeping people enslaved to archaic technologies. So this bill, this Paris Agreement, is supposed to change all that and end the archaic fuel and oil-based vehicles we have and introduce the higher, newer tech stuff. But buried in this bill was an agreement that everyone's currencies would would go off, especially America. The U.S. dollar exists no more. It is now called the U.S. note, the U.S.N., the U.S. note. And this is going back to gold bay, gold-backed gold currency that we always thought we originally had. The American dollar was based on gold. That's what everybody thinks. What happens with the federal treasury taken over by the Rothschild Mafia and began creating fiat currency, money out of thin air, backed by nothing. And that's the system we've been on since then. Most people don't even know. They don't even know what, what's really going on, what our currency, uh, the coup that overtook it, and the fact that fiat money is worthless. Well, this Paris Agreement now states that all money has to go back to gold-based currency. Everybody's money has to be based on gold. What Obama has done with the Paris Agreement is that he has conceded conceded the power of our money to China. And remember, whoever owns the money owns the nation. That's not me, that's Rothschild. That's Rockefeller. <laughs> that's Lucifer. Follow the money. Whoever controls the money controls the people. Whoever has the power and control of the money. Now who has it? Obama just conceded it over to the Yuan currency because all of the all of the currencies that are, are being well the revalue. R B for short, global currency revaluation, G C R is backed by Chinese gold. Chinese gold, not American gold, because you know why? There's no gold in America. It's all been shipped out. America has no gold. People say, oh, wait a minute, there's gold in Fort Knox. That's been a hoax for how many years now? It's a lie. In fact, the only thing at Fort Knox is this grotesque alien base that's there. And very few humans are even allowed inside of it. And they, they I went down there a couple of years ago and destroyed it with my Oregon warriors. Uh, but they had this brain thing. We want to talk about something science fiction. They had this huge brain. And, and it was like a living thing. And they would feed it different combinations. They were trying to develop viruses and different things. By, by feeding, they even feed humans to this brain. I don't know, it's something out of a sci-fi horror movie. Uh, but they, they were bringing in creatures from uh, space down in there too as well. People think the Ninja Turtles is, is fiction. Let me tell you a story. The Ninja Turtles, the cartoon, it was probably based for the ones that were being held prisoner at Fort Knox, uh, the base underneath Fort Knox. And this was actually a race that the father loves. 
he loved that race uh, because they loved him. They were good. They were. They they were. They loved him. That's all that matters. I don't know who they are. I don't know where they're from. I just knew that the father loved them, and they loved him, and he wanted to free them, and he sent us down there to destroy that base because when we destroy that base, it freed the turtles. I know it sounds. Uh, but there's a lot of truth that's it's truth. So they were freed. And they were sent back to the Father in Heaven. So they're all with him. Uh, but yeah, so I don't mind my grandkids being big Ninja Turtle fans. Because I always have a huge problem with Nickelodeon and Disney. And I don't even let my kids watch that garbage. Um, but I don't mind it. The Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I don't know what the ninja part is. Maybe it's because it's a description that because the turtles had warriors as a part of their race, their clan. Every faction does. Every faction has an army. The warriors, the gladiators, every faction has it, even heaven. It doesn't mean the entire group is warriors. It's just there's always the faction of the, for the fighters, the fighters. And the ninja turtles were no different. I know that there's a lot of different types of races, non, not angelic, just kind of creature type things that that do please the Father. We have animals here on Earth. You know, at one time the animals were able to speak, so before the fall, so you know, what's to say the Father wouldn't redeem and save them? I mean, he's not going to now they're out in Palm State, but what's to say he wouldn't? Mankind to the Palm State. His redemption was only to uh, humans, though. People always ask me, is my cat going to be in heaven? Is my dog going to be there? <laughs> I fully expect to see my Jesse when I get to heaven. I know he's up there. My Jesse was a shepherd that sit at my feet for seven years and leave my side. I couldn't get up and walk ten feet in this house without that dog behind me. He was a protector. He'd go outside and the angels would mess with him. They'd have him running all over the yard after them. <laughs> a lot of fun. Uh, but where am I? Oh, the Paris Agreement. So Obama has signed over our our the power of control of our money to, to China. And I, I told you, you know, ever since he came into office, the first thing he did was send Hillary over there to sign the eminent domain document and giving them eminent domain to default it on loans. And then Obama made darn sure the government defaulted on the loans. And so that loan gave them legal access to eminent domain of America. And now he just signed the Paris Agreement, and hidden within the Paris Agreement was the fact that all of our currencies, everyone's currencies, will not be backed by Chinese gold. How much more do you need, folks? The dragon race, the Chinese, are Lucifer's direct offspring. They're Lucifer's and Lilith's children. They're his direct offspring. And even deep within the pages of global GCR and RVs and Paris agreements, you have the Chinese dragons. Now, I was talking to Father this morning about this, because you'll see it often in in these uh, uh, financial boards, they're talking about the Chinese elders and blah, 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 and you're thinking, what are they talking about? I hate the New Age garbage. I like to find out exactly who's what, where, because the New Age is always played by the very people they trust to be giving them honest information. I don't know why they would trust them. <laughs> so I was asking Father this morning, and uh, it's the Chinese elders, okay, in China society, everybody's an elder. You know, the older people, uh, they're not senior citizens, retirees. They're referred to as elders. 
They're the elders. They're the elders. They're the oldest amongst them. The elders. And and so in the in the background they have the oldest, the elders, which are in our society they're known as the Illuminati. In the Chinese society they're known as elders. And this is a different faction of dragons. You know, the Illuminati, if you look at the Illuminati families, Queen Lizard, you have the Bushes, the Clintons, Obama, they're all related because they're all from the same bloodline that's reptilian-dominated. That Rh-negative blood is a reptilian-dominant bloodline. The Illuminati bloodline is where the 13 families are from. Uh, there's also a distinct Chinese Illuminati Family bloodline, the Lees, L I, Lees. That is a reptile line within the Chinese. But they have their entire race. And, and I told you back in the day when uh, Lilith had children with Lucifer. She had, uh, she was the mother, the matriarch of the almond eye races. The Chinese are her offspring, with Lucifer. And his people, his reptiles, because they were all cursed in the garden together. It wasn't just Lucifer. It affected all the, all the angels that fell with them. They all became reptiles. They raised Lilith's children because she was banned from the earth for a while before she found her way back here. But they would take her children that she had with, with uh, Lucifer over in Babylon is where they were, right in Iraq. Um, they raised her children, and that is the Asian race. They were not always based in China where they are today. They were actually the Middle East. They dominated the Middle East. Nebuchadnezzar was Chinese. Everybody knows Nebuchadnezzar. That name rings a bell. I always heard that in the Bible. I'll give you some background info. He was Chinese. Lilithian. All of the almond races are her offspring. And so this is why the Chinese race is the dragon race. They worship the dragon. They don't hide it. It's on everything part of their culture. It's who we are 101 with the Chinese race. Everything is the dragon. Because Lucifer is their father, the dragon. He takes that personification with them. Now, I know that in the... Are in the money uh, financial board communities, everybody thinks the Japanese are the one that dominated the White Hat Society because of Isaac and Fulford and all them. They're a distraction. They're the ones who put their face on the forefront. But it's the Chinese in the background that are pulling the strings. The Japanese and the little white dragon society are just the distractions. They have no real dominance at any at all over the Chinese. So once that, 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 once at RVs, you'll see the Chinese just disappear in the background. Because they've got no power. Everything about them is illusion. They think they're self-appointed ones. They think uh, the Ark of the Covenant's over there. They think all this stuff. They've been given this false history. They're talking to a false fake angel, Raphael, and, you know, they've been allowed... To, to be the forefront of, of uh, currency evaluation. And they, and they always have that. All right. So they'll be gotten rid of, basically. Chinese will come from behind the curtain, and people are going to see the Chinese as the dominant beings they are. And the reason they're given that authority is because they're Lucifer's direct children on Earth. You know, the reptilians, look at the Illuminati. And the reptilians, reptiles that we have now, the Queen, the Pope, uh, that that whole line, including the, the, the Bushes and Clintons and, and all of them, all the Illuminati 13 families, they're reptile seed lines. They're the people who fell with Lucifer. Okay? They're not Lucifer direct. They're all snakes. They're all, they were all cursed as reptiles. But his children direct are... are but Lilith is, is the Chinese dragon. That's why they're going to be given great power and authority, the military arm, because there's a billion of them. It's the oldest race on this planet because Lilith was the first woman with a child. It wasn't Eve. 
It was Lilith. Remember, Lilith was Adam's first wife. She left him. Refused to go back. Was eventually cursed and banished off the earth. But before she left, she had children with Lucifer, just as Eve did. Eve had several, not just Cain. She had several others because she left Adam too and had more children with Lucifer. And this is stuff the churches do not go into. They don't even know about it. Lucifer has sanitized history. So people don't know what the truth is. You can find stuff in ancient writings. They wanted to keep a simple narrative of A to Z in the KJV. That's why you'll never find everything that's ever happened in the KJV. You know, people people ask me, where's Argo in the KJV? Well, where's satellites? Where's HDTVs? Where's dishwashers? Why are people so glued to 66 books, which is a Masonic number? <laughs> uh, that tells you it's controlled. It's being controlled. The Father's message is there, but everything else is being controlled to a narrative to keep you stupid, blinded, and dumbed down from the truth. Anyway... So the Paris Agreement is in effect. Obama announced it. So we should be having uh, uh, a currency evaluation, which means China takes over the money. It's already been signed. We're just waiting for the announcement. I don't think he's going to come out and say, hey, hey, America, ha, ha, I just gave China control of your money supply. We just went from the Rothschilds to the Chinese. <laughs> but that's what they did. That's what they did. So that's going to come out. Uh, and people are going to get all, all hyped on this new currency, and which is enjoy it for a few months. Because you know what they're going to do in the spring and, and summer of next year? They're going to move everything to blockchain digital tech, uh, currencies technology. Yeah, the Bitcoin that we all hate, think it's stupid, don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, that's going to be dominant. Well, something like it. I don't know if it's going to be the Bitcoin itself, but they are moving into blockchain technologies because they're going to completely eliminate... The printing of money. There's going to be no printing of money anymore. It's all going to be digital. It's all going to be blockchain. So stashing money under your mattress, uh, you can maybe use it to, to keep a fire going. It'll be useless. Because everything's digital. Everything's going to be digital. There's going to be a rush for people to take the money out of their mattresses and get it into the bank. So it's credited to their accounts. Yeah, that's where we're headed, folks. Not much time left. And with Obama signing this Paris Agreement and giving the power of U.S. money back to to the Chinese, you see them taking over already through Abbott Downing Investment Advisors here in America, Wells Fargo and Chase. That's all being Chinese dominated. Well, they own Wells Fargo, and that's who the whole currency reform is going through, is Wells Fargo. And you can already see you can't trust nothing by the Chinese. They poison dog food. They've killed animals. They've killed babies. They poison formula. What heartless creatures would put poisons in baby formula to kill babies? Well, they did, because they eat them. They have baby soup. They have infant soup. They are not like us. They are not cut from the same cloth. They are not Adam's children. Obama did what he was supposed to do, and that was to destroy America. And one month before he's supposed to be out of office, new elections coming up, he completely sealed the deal. And they are not going to let Trump come in or Hillary come in to change anything that he's just accomplished. Nothing will be changed. They will protect the status quo. Because all of this leads us into last day's prophecy and exactly what the Bible has already prophesied. Talk about the mark of the beast. Have to have his number name. This is how we get there. This is the roads you take and how we get from A to B. It's how you get there. All of it's being paved out. This 
is actually the calm before the storm. Because 2017 is a total storm, folks. And now you're starting to see why. It's the build-up, the build-up, the build-up. Moving away from cash societies. Can we be totally cashless. Once you move into a cashless society, you're talking about the implementation of the mark of the beast. Chip, implement, chip implantation. That's just cashless society. And, and, and blockchains and, and digital currencies, that's just code speak for chip implantation. Because you will have to have a chip to access those technologies. That's how they're introducing it. That's how they'll run it. And they want to have that going by next year. Some countries are already introducing the chip implanting. America is way behind the scenes on that. Other countries are way more advanced. They've been trying their technologies out, using the other countries as guinea pigs, especially the Middle East. Uh, they use them as guinea pigs for everything before they're going to implement it here. So, why well, this show goes fast. That's where we are right now. Paris Agreement was signed. Gold-backed dollar is set to be announced at any moment. The, the new United States note. Uh, moving away from fuel and oil-based technology into batteries, and electrical and lithium and all that. Blockchain development technology. The E-note, e E-U-S dollar note. Um, yeah, that's where... It's, you know, and and of course, in the meantime, we have Comedy Central with uh, the, the election. <laughs> the election. Lucifer doesn't care who wins. He owns both of them. They're both his. Hillary's not human. And Trump is controlled by a mind wire. And all the people around him, they're all alone. He's a, he's a high-level mason. It's not like he was a, some kind of a Christian and then deceived. Oh, come on, folks, wake up. How many Christians just gag me to death with your crap? You think everybody loves the Father? They're Satan worshippers. They love Lucifer. And, uh, and he's a long time Lucifer lover. Look at his apartment. He's got Apollo. He's got demon creatures. Ugh. But there's Christians out there who defend Trump. They use Christians. <laughs> just like they did George Bush Sr. and George Bush Jr. Oh, good Lord. That's why the church is in such a mess today. Because you have so many Christians with their heads up their butts and so far down the sand. Uh, there's there's not a there's not a technical machine alive that could that could dig deep enough to pull them out. Anyway folks, don't forget to support your favorite ministry online. Go to SherryShriner.com. dot com. Uh click on the GoFundMe button. Uh Need your support to stay on the air. Keep our resistance going against Lucifer and his strongholds on this earth. Till next week, everybody. God bless. <laughs>